In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Christ is among us. He is and always shall be. God bless. Please scooch and make yourselves comfy with each other. <coughs> if you haven't yet had a chance to come to Venerate the Cross, please feel free to do so uh, after the homily. We celebrate this Sunday of the fast to encourage us, and uh, when we come and we fall down before the footstool of the Lord's feet, which is the cross, uh, we give him due glory for what he has done for us, but he in turn gives us grace and strength so that we can complete the fast. Today, it is uh, also a beautiful blessing that on the new calendar, we are celebrating and commemorating the life of the Holy Patriarch Tikhon, Patriarch of Moscow, Confessor of the Faith, and Lightner of North America, a very important saint to our church in North America. So I'm going to tell you, and his life is a story of the cross. So I'm going to tell you some of his story, a good chunk of it. It's going to take a little bit longer than my usual sermons because it's a worthwhile story and he is a worthy saint to hear it. Uh, I'll capture some time back on the flip side with the uh, doing silent prayers today for the St. Basil's Liturgy. <laughs> St. Tikhon, Patriarch of Moscow and all Russia, Lightning of North America, is an incredible example of a good missionary bishop, but also simply a Christian who has embodied the image of Christ. Especially, of course, as an archpastor, taking up his cross and following Christ, being willing to lay down his life for his flock. He was born Vasile Belovin in Russia in 1965 in a, in a very humble village priestly family. And from childhood, he was kind and sensitive to the needs of others and had a notable piety. Uh, his mother died when he was still very young, and his father was left to raise three boys. And there is a story told about a prophecy that occurred to his father. One night, when Vasily was still a boy, his father had a revelation about each of his children. One night, when he and his three sons slept in the hayloft, why did they sleep in the hayloft? It's warm. Because it's warm in the wintertime from the animals, and even the priestly family was sleeping in a hayloft like a little house on the prairie, okay? When he and his three sons slept in the hayloft, he suddenly woke up and roused them. He had seen their dead mother in a dream who foretold to him his imminent death and the fate of his three sons. She said that one would be unfortunate throughout his entire life, another would die young, while the third, Vasile, would be a great man. The prophecy of the dead woman proved to be entirely accurate in regard to all three brothers. Having attended seminary and entered monastic life at the young age of 26, he was made an Archimandrite soon after and elevated to the rank of bishop at age 32. Young bishops were very much needed at this time in the vast regions of the Russian Orthodox Imperium, especially in Alaska, where he was assigned to less than a year later. And now I'll read a section from the OCA's uh, Orthodox Church in America's website. Uh, there's the story of his life. He did much to promote the spread of orthodoxy and to improve his vast diocese. He reorganized the diocesan structure and changed its name from Diocese of the Aleutians and Alaska to Diocese of the Aleutians and North America in 1900. So the, the headquarters of the uh, Russian Metropolia or, or uh, Diocese of Alaska moved at this time to San Francisco and eventually would move to New York as well. And now it's actually here in uh, Washington, D.C., actually Springfield, Virginia. <laughs> Humbly. Uh, both clergy and lady loved their archpastor and held him in such esteem that the Americans made Archbishop Tikhon an honorary citizen of the United States. On May 22, 1901, he blessed the cornerstone of St. Nicholas Cathedral in New York. He was also involved in establishing other churches. On November 9, 1902, he consecrated the Church of St. Nicholas in Brooklyn for the Syrian Orthodox Church, and that's where uh, St. Raphael of Brooklyn was. Two weeks later, he consecrated St. Nicholas Cathedral in New York City. He had a love for St. Nicholas. In 1905, the American mission was made an archdiocese, and St. Tikhon was elevated to the rank of archbishop. He had two vicar bishops, Innocent and Raphael. 
uh, to assist him in ministering to his large ethnically diverse diocese. In June 1905, St. Tikhon gave his blessing for the establishment of St. Tikhon's monastery. And eventually, uh, the seminary would be built there as well. Now, he did not neglect the faithful in Alaska and the Aleutian Islands, even while he was running around these big cities down here in the lower 48. In fact, uh, he did quite extensive travel in Alaska. Orthodox America, a kind of a watershed um, periodical in English for Orthodox Christians in America, <laughs> reports following memories from original sources. In one record, on May 6, 1900, at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, His Eminence Tikhon set sail for Alaska on the ship of the Northern Commercial Company, Homer. This time, His Eminence wished to visit the Kuskokwim mission established by Bishop Nicholas. Inasmuch as the sole means of communication with this mission is by dog sled, Vladika <laughs> is now faced with the difficulty of traversing on foot the marshy tundra. In especially difficult places, he must trust himself to his porter's skills. The lack of any means of contact with this mission in summer has hindered previous hierarchs from visiting this corner of the diocese. So difficult in the summer, impossible in the winter, most likely. But nonetheless, he went. Uh, he took with him the priest, Yuan Orlov, who wrote this in his diary in, uh, in another trip to Alaska. In 1905, God deigned that I should accompany Bishop Tikhon and the priest James Korchinsky on a trip from the Russian mission on the Yukon, through portages along the tundra, through lakes and rivers, along the Kuskova, to my St. Paul mission. The weather was clear, still sunny. The entire trip, we were tormented by myriads of mosquitoes. When we broke the camp for the night, we all together with Vladika gathered dry branches for a fire. Along the way, we managed to shoot some wild ducks. Vladika helped me to pluck the feathers. I was both hunter and cook for our company. And when it came time to go through the forest, Vladika sent me on ahead with a gun in case we should be met by a bear or other wild <laughs> animal. Still, uh, by the way, a necessity in wild Alaska. As an archpastor, St. Tikhon encouraged the development of a missionary attitude, not only among his clergy, but also among the laity. In a sermon for the Sunday of Orthodoxy in 1903, he exhorted his flock from the ambo of the cathedral in uh, San Francisco, saying, holding to the Orthodox faith as to something holy, longing for it with all their hearts, and prizing it above all. Orthodox people ought to endeavor to spread it among people of other creeds. Christ the Savior has said that neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. The light of Orthodoxy was not lit to shine only on a small number of men. The Orthodox Church is universal. It remembers the words of its founder, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. We ought to share our spiritual wealth, our truth, life, and joy with others who are deprived of these blessings, but often are seeking them and thirsting for them. But who, it is, who, it, who is to work for the spread of the Orthodox faith and for the increase of the children of the Orthodox Church? Pastors and missionaries, you answer. Well, you are right, but are they to be alone? St. Paul wisely compares the Church of Christ to a body, and the life of a body is shared by all its members. So it ought to be in the life of the Church also. The spread of Christ's faith ought to be near and precious to the heart of every Christian. In this work, every member of the Church ought to take a lively and heartfelt interest. Too soon, sad news for the American flock, though. In February of 1907, a decree signed by the emperor arrived, appointing the saint to the seas of Yaroslavl and Rostov back in Russia. In his farewell communication to his American flock, Archbishop Tikhon expressed a concern for the church in America that is still valid today. He said, how can we help fearing for our small flock? How easily the candle can be extinguished by the wind coming through an open window. How easily can an oarsman in a frail boat be overturned by the sea waves? Here we cannot boast of great numbers, neither of renown, nor of wealth, nor of learning, all that is valued in this world. We are strong here only in one thing, in possessing the true Orthodox faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. And we should ask the Lord for the increase of this gift. Let them stand fast in the Holy Church in the Orthodox faith. So, 
only about seven years was he bishop in North America, but was extremely influential and made an incredible impact as a bishop. Uh, he went to, to Russia. He was also in uh, Lithuania and Vilnius in 1913 until he was called back in about 1917 to Russia. And uh, he did great work there during World War I, providing for the needs of those who had been uh, you know, suffering from the war, displaced, in, in difficulty, and was eventually, in 1917, elected to the ruling bishop of the city of Moscow. And on not August 15, 1917, a local council was opened in Moscow, and Archbishop Tikhon was raised to the dignity of Metropolitan, and then elected as chairman of the Council Synod. The council had at its aim to restore the life of the Russian Orthodox Church on strictly canonical principles, and its primary concern was the restoration of the patriarchate. For, uh, for a few centuries, the czars had diminished the patriarchate to a metropolitan role so that it could be a little bit more manageable, subservient, if you will, to the ruling power. The, the return of the patriarchate was, was uh, a, a restoration for the church. Of course, it came at a very difficult time. Now, all council members would select three candidates, and then a lot would reveal the will of God. The council members chose three candidates. Archbishop Anthony of Kharkov, the wisest. Archbishop Arseny of Novgorod, the strictest. And Metropolitan Tikhon of Moscow, the kindest of the Russian hierarchs. And on November 5, following the Divine Liturgy in M11 in the Cathedral Church of Christ the Savior, a monk removed one of the three ballots from the ballot box which stood before the Vladimir icon of the Mother of God and Metropolitan Vladimir of Kiev announced Metropolitan Tikhon as the newly elected patriarch. Of course, this event has faded into legend and uh, recently retold in the Goblet of Fire as the tribe wizard. <laughs> <laughs> she stole that from us. Yes. <laughs> In accepting the will of the council, Patriarch Tikhon referred to the scroll that the prophet Ezekiel had to eat, on which was written the words, Lamentations, Mourning, and Woe. He foresaw that his ministry would be filled with affliction and tears, but through all his suffering he remained the same accessible, unassuming, and kindly person. It is said that all who met St. Tikhon were surprised by his accessibility, simplicity, and modesty. His gentle disposition did not prevent him from showing firmness in church matters, However, particularly when he had to defend the church from her enemies, he bore a very heavy cross. He had to administer and direct the church amidst wholesale church disorganization without auxiliary administrative bodies in conditions of eternal schisms and upheavals. And that's all just kind of the, the problems happening in the Church of Russia on top of the Bolshevik Revolution. The situation was complicated by external circumstances, the change of the political system, the accession of power by the godless regime, by hunger, by civil war. This was a time when church property was being confiscated, when clergy were being subjected to court trials and persecutions. Christ's church endured repression. News of this came to the patriarch from all ends of Russia. His exceptionally high moral and religious authority helped him to unite the scattered and enfeebled flock. At a crucial time for the church, his unblemished name was a bright beacon, pointing the way to the truth of orthodoxy. In his, message, in his messages, messages, he called on people to fulfill the commandments of Christ and to attain spiritual rebirth through repentance. His irreproachable life was an example to all. And uh, although he was a preacher of peace, he actually told his clergy, don't get involved in the politics as much as you might want to. Avoid making political statements. Don't give them a pretext to arrest you. Uh, they still found one because they were communists, and they arrested him in, in 1923, and he spent about a year in jail. They didn't want to make a martyr of, of this saint, uh, so they let him out, but they had broken uh, his health for sure, uh, but not yet his spirit. Nonetheless, in 1924, Patriarch Tikhon began to feel unwell. He checked into a hospital, but he would leave it on Sundays and feast days in order to conduct services. On Sunday, April 5, 1925, he served his last liturgy and died two days later. On April 7th, which, by the way, today is also the Feast of the Annunciation on the old calendar, the Patriarch received Metropolitan Peter and they had a long talk, and in the evening the Patriarch slept a little. When he woke up and asked what time it was, he was told it was 11.45 p.m. 
He made the sign of the cross twice and said, Glory to thee, O Lord, glory to thee. He did not have time to cross himself a third time. Almost a million people <coughs> came to say farewell to the patriarch. The large cathedral of the Donskoy Monastery in Moscow could not contain the crowd, which overflowed the monastery property into the square and the adjacent streets. St. Tikhon, the 11th Patriarch of Moscow, was primate of the Russian church for seven and a half years, just about as long as he was here in America. It would be difficult to imagine the Russian Orthodox Church without Patriarch Tikhon during those years. He did so much for the church and for the strengthening of the faith itself during those difficult years of trial. Perhaps his own words best sum up his life. May God teach every one of us to strive for his truth and for the good of the Holy Church rather than something for our own sake. To the prayers of our Holy Patriarch and Confessor Tikhon, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Amen. Christ is one. He is one.